Hi, I'm Una. I, I'm a host and Denver Public School student. Hi, I'm Bridget. I'm also a host and also a Denver Public School student. Welcome to the Nerd Necessities Network, the show broadcast from the Fortress of Nerditude. And glorious nerd person point of view. So Bridget, what path will all hosting duties take us on today? Well, we'll be sharing stories from the nerd side, announcing loco, local geeky events, having a Comic-Con convo, trying to discover where we are, and lots of S word play. Superman, Supernatural, Super Smash Brothers, Sailor Moon, what S word? Sword. You know it's spelled S word, word play, sword play, whichever it works. Ah, and now on to the new S. <laughs> we would like to inform you of a couple of passings of some greats. First, Christopher Lee, the infamous villain from the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings trilogies, died at age 93. He will be remembered as Saruman. In his own words, it, er, sorry, as is his own wishes, his body was cremated and given to friends and family who tossed his ashes into Mount Doom. From villains to the other side of the coin, the great Leonard Nimoy passed away as well. Live long and prosper. Is there no better way to identify the quote than con connecting it to an asteroid? Yes, the great Leonard Nimoy has an asteroid named after him. We here at the Nerd Show were able to get a glimpse of this asteroid. Let's take a look. From way up in space to here in the deep blue, there was a sea turtle that attained a 3D printed draw. The beak, which is made of medical grade di titanium, replaced the loggerhead turtle's jaw. This occurred because the propeller of a boat clashed with the turtle's face. Some might consider this to have been an accident, but others think differently due to the fact that the boat is called Tonight I Dine on Turtle Soup. GameStop was fortunate enough to buy ThinkGeek, the parent comp or GeekNet, the parent company of ThinkGeek. It was unfortunate news for Hot Topic, as GeekNet had originally agreed to be bought by them. When gamers heard the news, all MMOs stopped for a moment of cheer, while punks, goths, and emos had something else to be upset about. Questions that have been asked but never answered will drive human spirit and curiosity for millenniums to come. Questions like, what is the meaning of life? Can Superman be turned into a vampire or a zombie? But of all the important questions out there, one still remained unanswered. Until recently. Who shot first, Han Solo or Greedo? Now you can sleep sound at night because the mystery has been solved. Kristen Brown, a librarian at the University of New Brunswick, find out, found out who really shot first in the revised script, which was the fourth edition dated March 15, 1976, a year before the release date in 1977. Brown states, I'll tell you one thing right now. Based on the script, I can tell you 100% hand shot first. Does geek stuff make you hot? It does if you are a lucky participant in the year-long heating pilot program uh, by the Dutch company Nerdalize. Nerdalize recognized that computer processing data centers give off a lot of heat. In fact, the companies that run these centers uh, spend vast sums of money on cooling technologies to keep their c computers running. Couldn't someone invent a product that could fix this pro problem? Nerdalize came up with a home radiator that has a computer inside of it. The computer is hooked up to the data center that, through fiber optics. The computer then does what the computer should do. It processes, 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 and gets really hot. The radiator is designed to take this heat and expel it into the room, thus cooling off the computer while providing a warm, cozy environment for you. This also elimin eliminates the need for your motherboard to tell you to put on a sweater. And finally, for the Fast and Furious out there, artist Renee Turek has made a BMW very angry. The bright blue BMW features a hidden design that is sure to be a colossal hit with the nerd crowd. When hot water is poured to the car, the Incredible Hulk appears all around on the hood and the sides of the car. It's so intense. You want to know what's even angrier than the Incredible Hulk himself? The owner of that car if you were to get in an accident <laughs> with him. It's too bad we couldn't see the Hulk car live, but there are plenty of other things for nerds to do around the metro area. Grab your tunics and corsets, 
join the merriment at the Colorado Renaissance Fair in Lakespur, Colorado. Open weekdays now through August 2nd, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., rain or shine. Discount tickets are available at King Supers and Wendy's. For more information, look at the Colorado Renaissance Festival website. You can also find out how to make a comic book from scratch. By the end of the session, you will have developed your own superheroes, fantasy setting, and villain. And we will have be able to have an amazing adventure to share with the world. Registration is required and attendance will be limited to 15 participants. And this is held on July 11th at the Stanley Lake Library. For more information, feel free to look at the Jefferson County Library website. It's music to our geeky ears at, uh, with our friends at the Colorado Symphony. They have a couple nerdy shows this summer, the music of Harry Potter, July 18th at the Bro Brocher Concert Hall, Video Games Live with your Colorado Symphony, August 5th at the Red Rocks Amphitheater. Look on their website for more information. Also coming up is the greatest international scavenger hunt the world has ever seen, also known as Gish West. This international scavenger hunt is a week full of fun, sleeplessness, silliness, and humanitarian efforts. Started by everyone's favorite earthbound angel, Misha Collins from Supernatural, this event is played by people from all over the world, and it'll be running this year from August 1st to August 8th, and you can look at their website for more information. Nandesucon, or NDK, is Denver's premier anime convention. This year, the con will take place September 4th through 6th. For those of you who are regular NT attendees, please make a note of the new location at the Sheraton in downtown Denver. Look at the website for more information. The sci-fi film series presented by the Denver Museum of Nature and Science and the Denver Film Society will be occurring this year as well and soon. Um, you can, at this event, you can join museum scientists and Vincent Paturo, who is a PhD English professor at Metro State, and they'll be screening famous sci-fi films, break down the science behind the alternative possibilities, and try to separate fact from fiction. And these shows, uh, films will be shown throughout the summer. In addition, the Museum of Nature and Science is still running their Mystical Creatures exhibit, which will be running from now through September 8th, and you can look at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science website for more information on that. The Idea Lab at the central location of the Denver Public Library. Um, with, the idea, with the Idea Lab's equipment and software, teens can make videos, games, music, art, and more. The lab is free to any teenagers from age 12 to 19. No library card is necessary. Look at the Denver Public Library website for more information. Speaking of ideas and creativity, I personally saw some really creative, awesome costumes at this year's Denver Comic Con. Una, Natasha, Mara, and I got to experience the con firsthand. Let us show you the con happenings. My Astros in the production control. Roll tape! Hello, I'm Jubilee. I am a super nerd. I'm your generalized low-key nerd. And I'm Buddy Manders, and we are Nerd Necessities Network, and we are filming on location at Denver Comic Con! We're at Comic Con. I was just walking through and thought we'd stop by.
Resident Evil franchise, both movies and video games, and we're the Umbrella Corporation. So we're the bad guys that make the zombie virus and release it, and we try and take over the world. Consultant with the Colorado Symphony here with Una and Bridget of Nerd Necessities Network. I'm turning the tables and I'm interviewing them for a change because wow, mind blown. What do you think of your first ever convention? It's like pretty intense. Like there's so much going on and so many people and like so much to do and like I'm like there's so much to see. I'm like overwhelmed and like totally overstimulated, but it's like awesome. There's a big Dalek standing right over there. It's the coolest thing ever. Stop. Stuff like that just happens everywhere. What would you say this convention is missing, if anything? Uh, I, I just broke your brains. I looked like, okay, we need to reboot both of you. And then what have been some things that you guys did today? Um, we went all around looking at costumes. We did some crafts. We're here at DCC in Denver. Do we want it to end? Never! There's comic books and video games. Nothing here would ever be lame. You can purchase merch, do arts and crafts. Everyone here has lots of laughs. Yes, NerdNet on DPS TV. We're so much cooler than NBC. That's a wrap. Comic-Con. Oh As you can see in the video, it was just <laughs> truly a spiritual experience. <laughs> just really good time. A lot of interesting stuff. I personally had never been to a con before. It was very exciting. Yeah, I mean, Mara and I are both veterans, so we know what we were, what we were up against, but what was the first time experience for you guys? overwhelming there was just so much going on and like so much to do and like yeah. we were only there for one day and so it was like trying to do everything and I totally didn't do everything I mean <laughs> there were so many things that I didn't even get to see or anything and so I'll definitely be back because I need to be able to like experience the awesomeness that is Comic-Con in its more more of its entirety I mean, I definitely got to go back when I get a little bit of cash. There's all kinds of cool stuff that my little nerdy heart just broke that I couldn't buy. <laughs> so I got to gotta find myself back there with a little bit of money in my pocket, maybe. Yeah, you definitely need funds for Comic-Con. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Another <laughs> struggle. So what about you guys? How did it measure up to some of the other cons you've been to? Um, honestly... I was exhausted because it was graduation weekend and Memorial Day weekend, and I've been like going nonstop for like the past four or five days. So like I was a little, a little bit of a haze, but I was having fun. I actually ended up missing the first day because I had prom, oh. and so I tried to come up with this situation called Operation Promicon, but it did not work <laughs> at all. But I was there for the other two days, and it was, it was a beautiful thing kind of better than the last ones, like, change, you know. Yeah. What kind of stuff did you guys do outside, like, outside of our little group? Um, I ended up spending a lot of time in the dealer's room, and I also went to quite a few panels. I got to see Sean Astin, which was pretty cool. Was he beautiful? Yes. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> um, who else did I get to see? I also got to see Alan Tudyk, who, Firefly fame, and, like, a bunch of other stuff, yeah. King Candy, a bunch of voice work. He was really funny. He stole a bit from Nathan Fillion, where he like grabs random crap and autographs it. It's pretty great. There you go. I wonder yeah. if he'd autograph my face. Probably. So Comic-Con was pretty great for us, and we actually have to move on, but it was great for us, and we're actually bringing on our, f our first guest for today. Welcome. His name is Antonio. He's one of our you have resident the the awesome people. What kind of cape? And he gets to wear our um, suit. It honestly might be a dog cape. <laughs> 
We don't know. Okay. We're not quite sure. There we go. But it looks dashing. Yes. So. Uh, dashing. Look how dashing you are. <laughs> so, you're here today to talk to us about swords, is that correct? Yes, yeah, swords and video games. Uh-oh. <laughs> the most interesting kind. Mm. All, all others are just boring, let's be honest. Yeah. So, of course, this being the nerd show, and this being the 21st century, you can't be a self-respecting nerd in the 21st <laughs> century without having a good grasping of everything video game related. And this includes swords. True. So, what I've done, so I put together a little challenge for y'all. Mm. Awesome, awesome challenge of spectacular dazzles and lights. You're gonna be presented with six different swords. I want you to name the video game franchise these swords are from. If you can do this, you get all the video game nerdy credits for the show. If you don't do this, you lose one N in the N3. Oh, man. Oh, oh no. no. Which N? Pressure. Let's, let's say... Uh, Is it just going to be Necessities Network no, because we lost our no, nerd quote? No, no, no. <laughs> no? You still have nerd. Okay. It's just not going to be Necessities. It's not going to be yeah. Network. It's oh, just, just be Nerd Necessities. Nerd Necessities. necessities. All, right. All, right. Okay. All right. Okay. That's well, let's some pretty try high not stakes. to lose our network. Mm. All right. We that network. <laughs> okay. So, let's just pull up these swords. <laughs> Ooh, that's a pretty okay. one. That's it's really good. I like the way it looks. Yeah. It's all, like, uh, technological. Yeah. I'm seeing a blue light, so I'm going to go ahead and go with Mass Effect. Mass Effect? What, what, what kind of Mass Effect has you thrown around? I don't play Mass blade. Effect, I well don't know. <laughs> well then, that was a very, very big guess. <laughs> um, I want to say it's Borderlands, but I'm not entirely sure. It does look a little more Borderlands-y, but no. 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 I mean, I don't know why this is coming to mind, but Bioshock. No. no, no. I guess it's I'm not sort a of gamer. A steampunk thing. I'm yeah. Sorry, it's, mm. Call of Duty. <laughs> no. Oh. Very close. Really? Very really? close. Wait. No, not at all. It's okay. Not Call of Duty. I have no idea, you guys. No idea. I'm not a gamer. I play games and I don't know. Do you have other hints I feel for us? really bad. Um, it is from a Wii game. From a Wii That's game. Not at all. Do you get helpful. to brand new the in the Wii hint. game? Yes. Hmm. Is it an exclusively Wii game? It started as an exclusive Wii game. Star Wars The Force Unleashed. That, was, that did not start as an exclusive <laughs> Wii game. Is it only for Nintendo? No, it's been on other consoles. It just started out only on Nintendo. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I give know. up. I give up. It's the Beam Katana from No More Heroes. Uh, okay. Oh, by Suda51. It's basically a lightsaber, know. but cooler. But cooler. Fair, Fair enough. enough. Fair All enough. Right. What, do we, what have we got next? next? Oh, my God. I feel like I've seen this one before. I have no <laughs> idea what it's from, but perhaps Diablo. It's a little Diablo, hellish. Just running through every I don't game know. I know. I I give up. <laughs> Already? <laughs> yes. This is like the third easiest one on this whole thing. The third uh, easiest. The third easiest. Oh, well, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you two are the big gamers over there. <laughs> You guys nothing. got nothing? We got, got nothing. nothing. Um, God of War. Uh, oh, that seems obvious now. Yeah, it really. Okay. All right, what's the next one? Let's see. Let's I think see. this is our last one, too. Um, what are you guys thinking? It's bluish. It's bluish. To contrast bluish. the redness of the last one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So much trouble in the names in this before. Zelda. No. <laughs> not Zelda. <laughs> Definitely not. What are the like fantasy games? Come on, you guys. It is fantasy. I don't know. Fantasy ish. Uh. From like some sort of video game world of sorts. World, world of, of Warcraft? Warcraft? There you go. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, you guys got one. Oh, okay, yeah. we're not we lose some of our nerd cred. Well, so Thank not you very much for joining us. Cred, but we're also losing some nerds. Yep. Thank so. you guys for joining us. Thank Bye, guys. As Una and I move on to oh. our next game, our favorite game, I have the things Thank for you. the Una. Thank you. Thank you for the things. Where on the virtual screen am I? As you can see, Una's wearing our very fancy mask. Look at her. She, is, she looks very ready for sleuthing here today. Okay. So, the first clue today, Una, mm. that we have is the population of this place as of 2000 speaks French, with English being second most common and Spanish third. Paris. Wrong. 
Since 1818, a particular chestnut tree has been used as the official herald of the spring. It's been observed that the, the, the tree is watched and then it is noted the day of the first and arrival of the first bud. While this event has no practical effect, there is an uh, official press release that's issued and the local newspaper will mention it in the news. Athens, Greece. <laughs> Still wrong. The oldest international school in the world is located, located there. It's called the ISG, and it was founded in 1924. Alexandria? No. Um, some famous names located with the city. This might help you. Fer Freddie Mercury, Charlie Chaplin. They both have statues there. Um, Frank Zappa once burned down a casino, inspiring Ooh. smoke on the water. Oh. Sherlock Holmes creator um, Sir Arthur Con Conan Doyle introduced the sport of skiing. And it's also where Albert Einstein is from. Is this somewhere in Iceland? No, but you're getting closer. Okay. Um, it has a lake that has the depth that averages about 507 feet. Greenland. Mm, just about as close as the last one. Um, the country that this, this place is in is known for its chocolate. Sweden. Mm, no. Um, it has a tall mountain in it that's also in the country. Uh, Norway. Its flag has a red cross on it. Oh, Lord. Um. Okay. Is it the Netherlands? No, it's actually, um, Geneva, Switzerland. Oh. So, you were getting close, <laughs> but not quite there. So, I'll tell you guys a little bit about what the nerd facts are about Geneva, Switzerland. So, in 1827, Lake Geneva was the first place where the speed of sound was tested in fresh water. Um, there's actually one CERN site in France, and then the, all the other four are located in Switzerland, including one that's close to Geneva. Um, they're connected by the intersite tunnel between French and the rest of them. CERN is also home to the Large Hadron Collider, and it's the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. Um, the web was created at a CERN base, and um, Geneva has the International Baccalaureate Headquarters, and um, interestingly enough, Victor Frankenstein is from Geneva and Mary Frankenstein, she Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> and also, in 1934, Howard Stark met Abraham Erksine at an international engineering conference. So, all sorts of nerd-related things going on in Switzerland and around Geneva. Awesome. So, that was our location for today. Awesome. Well, I believe we are bringing on our next guest. So, let's bring him on. Where'd our cape go? Right now. Uh, he's wearing it. Oh, perfect. We have he's Mr. Been... Eric Midved. How you doing, guys? Good. Hello. Thank you for joining us. I came here as a knight, but I think I arrived as a superman. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Uh, All right. Well, hello, Eric. How you doing? Very well. How are you? Good. Sweet. Good. Glad to be here. I'm glad. Welcome to Nerd Necessities Network. Um, well, since you are on a very nerdy show, can you tell us about your nerd cred? Uh, um, what makes you nerdy? Well, I brought something. Just happened to have it here. My Defiance video game bag. Oh. And I had to have some comic books. Of course. <laughs> lovely, <here, so>. lovely. <laughs> and uh, I'm actually the epitome of the nerd gone good. Because <laughs> I have a huge man cave at home, and it's got all kinds of nerdy stuff in it. I worked at a comic book store. Awesome. Perfect. I play D&D. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. <laughs> okay, so can you tell us your full name, your company name, and your job title? Uh, my job title, I'm Eric Medved. I own Castle Wall Productions. I also work a real job. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. Uh, I'm actually the president and owner of Castle Wall Productions. Cool. Can you tell us a little bit about Castle Wall? Castle Wall is a live steel theatrical combat troupe. So what we do is basically what you see in the movies, we do in front of a live audience. So choreographed fighting, we also do some unchoreographed fighting, but we basically put on a Robin Hood show. We also do a fantasy show, which is pirates versus ninjas, or I, I once dressed as a crusader, and a, uh, one of our members dressed as um, uh, not Ezio, the first Assassin's Creed character. Oh, ah, cool. Yeah, so. So you mentioned that you do some Robin Hood type games. Have you always been interested in the Robin Hood legend? Uh, Robin Hood's kind of, I mean, there's all kinds of different 
legends, Beowulf and King Arthur, but everybody knows almost all the Robin Hood people. I mean, you mentioned Little John, people know who it is. You mentioned Marion, they know who it is. You mentioned Robin Hood, they know who it is. And the Robin Hood, when, we, when I first started in the group, we had, they had decided to do Robin Hood before I got there. And Robin Hood just kind of sticks with everybody knowing it. <laughs> because Beowulf, if they know anything, they only know Beowulf and maybe one other character. And uh, with um, King Arthur, that's who they know, Merlin. Mm -hmm. But with Robin Hood, anybody, you know, the sheriff, you know who that is, you know who Prince John is. So I've always liked the Robin Hood story. And since starting uh, working with the group, so my interest has gotten better and more involved in it. When and where did you learn sword fighting? Uh, I got, I arrived in Denver in uh, 2000 and I found a flyer and I went and tracked down the person who had who set these flyers out. The girl that owned the troop, I eventually, I eventually joined. Uh, she was telling, you know, basically gave us the whole thing. She started teaching us. So it was like five of us that had started at the same time. And uh, eventually, she had done it in Florida. Originally, it sparked from the live chess games where they, you know, a knight moves and then fights a pawn and then that type of thing. And uh, that's pretty much where I learned it. And in 2004, she turned the group over to me. Cool. Cool, so. cool. So as we can see and as you obviously know, you've got some <laughs> pretty amazing costumes. So do you make your own costumes and swords? We do. Um, we actually, and we'll show you later, we actually do uh, a little bit of everything. We actually make some of our uh, costumes. Most of this, all this chainmail was handmade. It's about 400 man hours of work. Um, these were the tabard was uh, handmade. The weapons are welded and constructed by us. Although we also purchase some, uh, we actually were hired by a company to test two of their swords to see how well that they. Uh, stood up, but we ended up finally breaking them, but they got the seal of approval because we really beat them up. Uh, so we have some things like that, shields. We didn't make the shields. The helmet we bought, but it's uh, altered a little bit on the inside mm -hmm. to fit you know, our guys' needs. Cool, sweet. Well, do you think you can show us some sword fighting techniques? Uh, it depends. You have to get in uh, the right wardrobe. <laughs> okay, All well, right. perfect. Well, we're going to get suited up for that and move over to our other screen so we can do some sword fighting. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Somebody want to wear this? Let's go. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Denver, Colorado, one of the top 10 fastest growing cities in the U.S. We need workers now. So what are you waiting for? Don't let this pass you by. So what are you going to do? You need to make a difference in your life. They need workers right now. And Emily Griffith Technical College is where you can start your career path now. The term career path is heard all over Emily Griffith campus all the time. And I think it's a very good description. It's a pathway into something better. Something better and more diverse. Something better, more diverse, and more technical. Uh, the Manufacturing Technology Program provides that framework, that broad overview of manufacturing that allows those pathways to happen. The pathways are endless. You just need to get in there, find that pathway. I'll help you get there. The type of student I want to get into the manufacturing technology program at Emily Griffith is simply the people who want to make stuff out of other stuff. They have that inquisitive nature to say, how does something work? How does something get made? What's the source? What are the processes that go into it? That's the kind of person I want in the program. My name is Ewan Grantham, and I'm the general manager of Intertech Medical. Intertech Medical currently has a desire to continue to grow. We'd like to be able to double our size in the next 10 to 12 years. Uh, we are right now at a kind of a limit for the number of personnel we have for the amount of work we're doing. The very basic employee that we need is a press operator, and that person is primarily responsible for looking at the products as they're produced off the injection room press, visually inspecting them, uh, packaging them. Every day I hear from manufacturers who say, where are the entry-level people that I look for? I, I don't know where they are. I don't know where they're coming from. Well, we're trying to provide that conduit. We need a ton of employees. We need them from top to bottom. Our team of mechanical has been around for about 51 years. We do mechanical contracting, structural steel, energy, 
uh, water conditioning, and mechanical service. There's huge opportunities. We've got great benefits, great training. Uh, we do a lot of manufacturing, a lot of field construction. You can come in from the ground level and work your way all the way to the top. You know, most guys that come in off the street may start by, you know, just doing general cleanup. If you have the knowledge and what you learn at school, you come in and you start manufacturing right away. I think there are a lot of opportunities for people that they don't understand actually exist, and that's why programs like our manufacturing technology program exist. We believe in that principle. The very important point about this whole thing is we graduate students through Emily Griffith debt free. So I have one last question. What are you waiting for? Yeah, what are you waiting for? Come on, get online, sign up, get your career and your life started now. Hey, what are you doing? Are you just sitting there doing nothing? Check this out, Denver is growing fast. I mean like rocket to the moon fast. And one of the fastest growing sectors is construction. And they need workers, like yesterday. You know what you should try? CAD BIM. That's what I said, CAD BIM. What is CAD BIM? Computer assisted drafting, building information modeling. Only the coolest technical part of the design of buildings, roads, landscapes, you name it. Do you like computers? Do you like designing stuff? Then Emily Griffith Technical College has the right program for you. Listen to this. This program is geared toward the student who has the energy, who has the interest in designing, design technology, learning about buildings and architecture and engineering. In this program, we have small classes, we have a small lab, we have a lot of hands-on. We have a well-rounded atmosphere with the tech and the applications behind it. So students have a well-rounded education that they receive and a lot of individual attention to help them pursue that career. Is the industry growing? You bet it is, and Emily Griffith Technical College has got this. In the Denver metro area, we've definitely seen an increase, probably over 10% in architecture-related jobs, and CAD specifically, I think is up about 12% in the past four years. AutoCAD, Reddit, SketchUp, 3D printing. Emily Griffith will get you prepared for all the latest technology. There's actually a wide variety of jobs that uh, students of a program like this can go into. So architecture and construction are the base, of course, but there's also engineering, interior design, construction management, uh, civil engineering and landscape design, uh, even transportation and manufacturing. There are lots of different avenues that this lends itself to. They'll also learn the other side, which is uh, how buildings are put together, materials, methods, practices, and some industry practices as well. So come to Emily Griffith and get your future started. What are you waiting for? Get up, get out, and get signed up now. The program is part-time and lasts about a year, so you can work and go to school. So the only question left is, what are you waiting for? All right. All right, so, hello, welcome back, and we are about to start sword fighting. Oh yeah. You ready? I am so ready. Okay, first thing you do is you get your spacing. Okay, so lay your sword on top of my shoulder. Now, obviously, I could see so you have to be way out there, so I'll be a little bit closer. All right, now, you're going to attack me. Okay. Everything that we do when we learn how to sword fight is done on a target system. The targets are your neck, your knee, your head, your belly. So, my neck, my knees, All right. my head, my belly. Gotcha. What you're going to do is come at me. And you're going to aim for my neck going this way. Swing around. Nope, other way. Other way. Yep, swing around. Yep. Boom. Now, when you come at me, normally if I wasn't there, mm -hmm. it should come through. Yeah. But I will be there, trust me. All right. <laughs> Special. Okay, now do it on the other side. Yep. Perfect. Now do it on this side again. And again, a little bit quicker. Yep. Now when you do this, go up over your head like that. All right. The reason why... Everybody does this at least once when they learn. They go swing and <laughs> hit themselves. So what you want to do is you want to go high and aim for my neck over here. Yep. I'll go up high over your head. There you go. Perfect. And do it again and again. Remember, you got to be close enough to me. There you go. So now you're going to go for the knees. Okay. So all I'm going to do is it's going to be this knee. And stop. That knee, stop, that knee, 
Yep. And that. And your last two are going to be top of the head. All right. And then a poke to the stomach. When you do the poke to the stomach, come really far back and poke. All right. So do the top of the head, and you'll see what I do. No, you don't. <laughs> and then do a poke. Ooh. You see that? Yes. So now we're going to put all of them together. Okay. Cool. So go one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Sweet. Good. Now we add one more thing. Because it looks kind of static. It looks kind of, we're just going like this. So now back up a little bit. Okay, back up a little more. All right, you're going to follow me. All right. And ready? Yes. Come at me and walk. Yep. Walk. There we go. Yep. Yep. And I hit the swords back here, so I stop. Awesome. Excellent. Now, the hardest part of this, tacking is very easy for people to do. The hardest part is the defense. And here's why. Normally, if something's coming at you, you flinch. So you can't flinch. Did you see what I did when you attack me again? I didn't go. I just waited for it. Okay. I'm not going to hit so hard that it's going to knock the sword back, but you've got to have enough in there to, to stop that. Right. So, you ready? I'm yes. going to come at you now. One, let me come to you. Okay. See, it, <laughs> it's, it's human reaction. So you throw something at somebody, the first thing they do is, so let, let just relax. There you go. Yep. Other way. There you go. There. Yep. And remember this one? There you go. That's it. That's it. Now, we're going to have her do something a little different. Okay? You ready? Yes. So ready. You get to use these. We're going to let her use the same moves. Okay? Same moves. But what you're going to do is the same thing. You're going to come at me. Come on this side. I'm going to stop you. Yep. And then come to the knees. Come to the knees. Yep. Come to the head. Now notice this is a little bit different. I actually, because this is only a one-handed weapon, I have to keep it from doing this. <laughs> and then the last one is you go to poke me with it. Yep, just like that. And then knock it out of the way. Cool. So, can you do that over all five of them? Okay. Or all six of them, rather. Ready? Go ahead. Good. 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 That's all right. It didn't hit. That's fine. Good. And notice I go to that. And then either way. Generally, if you come to it when you're doing this and your uh, adrenaline's going, if you poke, say poke a little bit this way, I'll go out. Because what I don't want to do, poke, is go and hit myself. <laughs> So whatever side you go on, I'll go out that way. All these weapons pretty much use the same moves with the exception of the smaller ones because it's really hard to use a knife down here. <laughs> so you're aiming at the torso or the groin area. So you ready to add some footwork to it? Okay. Back up. Okay, you come at me. Take a step. Yep, take a step. Yep, take a step. Yep, take a step. And I stop because there's the swords behind me. There you go. Cool. Now, you guys feel pretty confident? I think I got this, yeah. Do you? Hey, okay, see. we're going to go one more. You two step on each other. Uh-oh. Now, this is what you got to do. You got to remember, you guys have to have, the first thing we teach is control and safety. The tip of your arm, the tip of your hand is not here. It's right here. The tip of your fingers are right at the end of this. So you have to, basically, the more you get used to doing this, it becomes muscle memory. So as you start learning the things, you know exactly where to be. You attack her, okay? Do the same thing that you did with me. Go ahead. And you're just going to, yep, now what you do is go like that, because she's okay. coming at you. Yeah. Okay, go the other side. There you go. Now at her knees. Yep, and at her other knee. Good. Now. This one, because you don't want, put it up, you know exactly, because when she comes down, you don't want your hand here. Oh. So you keep this in between the sword and the hand, and then she's going to stab her, and you just tap it out of the way. 
Yep. And just all you do is just go ahead and oh, grab it. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, stab her. That's it. Now you get to attack her. And you can mix these weapons up. You can use two swords, two uh, you know, mace or an uh, axe or whatever. Okay, go ahead and attack her. That's so weird to say. Okay, good. All right, yep. All right, here comes that headshot. Okay, make sure when you do that, you get it up high to keep her above you. Yep. And good, good. And real quick, we're going to show you the daggers. You can set those down. The daggers I told you are slightly different. Which ones do you want to do this? Um, Who wants to use the daggers? So you give me that closest one. Okay. Just... What you're going okay. to do, same net shots. All right. We have to be really close. All right. Okay. Neck. No. This one? No, you're not. Good try. <laughs> now, you can't go for the knees. So what you do is you go for a straight up crotch shot. Ooh. Nope. Mm -hmm. And then a poke. So this one, I go out to the side. Ooh. Then the five, coming down on me. But that's good control. Okay. And that's the way we teach our guys to sword fight. All right? Okay. So that's pretty much, if you want to learn this, Castle Wall does it every Sunday at Mission Viejo Park in Aurora. Okay. So that's what, we, that's what we do. If you have any questions about the weapons or anything. Cool. I think we've got a little bit more time. Can we beat you a little more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll go. Everybody likes this one. Go ahead and grab that one. And we'll give, since you did the daggers, we'll let her. All right. Now, even though you're smaller than me, you'll be able to overpower me with that sword. Okay. So I'm going to come to your side, knock it out of the way. I mean, forcibly knock it out of the way. I can't do, keep going. There's nothing. I can't do anything. Even though you're smaller, this weapon is not built to fight that. What I have to be able to do, and this is a, called a schlager. It's basically like a heavy rapier. Now this weapon's a little more past the Middle Ages. It's just, you know, uh, musketeers. Okay, but what I can do is that. Did you uh, see how quick? <laughs> see how quick it was? Yeah. Same thing. There's no way I'm going to come at you as a slice block for your head. I can't. There's no. I can't force my way past you. That's a heavier weapon. So go ahead and stop me. See? <laughs> See? <laughs> See how this weapon acts as a scorpion sting. It's basically a jab. So if I can get inside that sword, if you knock it out of the way and you trap it, all I have to do is I have to pull back and, yep. So it's a little bit of different style of weapons fighting each other. Cool. So, and we also have, we use bigger weapons, like a Dane axe. And then even, ugh, even bigger, a pole arm. And these weapons are very hard to use. Only our experienced guys use them because uh, it's very, very heavy on the end. I mean, oh, wow. and you're supposed to be using the weapon down here. So it's, it has a tendency to drag. So it's a very dangerous weapon to use, even when choreographing. Cool. So. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Yep. This is super awesome. And yep. now we are, are, we're ready. Sure. Ready to fight. All right. <laughs> or not. Really not. You never know when you're going to need to know how to fight with the sword. Hey, so. if the zombie apocalypse comes. I'm ready. You know what? I think we're about getting partially You're ready. on my zombie apocalypse. We're, apocalypse. we're, sharp, we're sharpening these because the camera's going to run out quick. Yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. So, is, that it? Like, is that good? Yeah, we're pretty much finishing up. Yep, that's the time. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yep, you guys, yeah, you guys were awesome. And like you said, yeah, if I you guys... We're going to have to do some more sword fighting. Yes, Obviously. definitely. I mean, so. Anytime. You uh, guys might not be able to see it, but we're definitely going to have a go. Yeah. And I'll let, I mean, our, our oldest person is yeah. 73. Wow. wow. And Younger, he's, you go. our youngest is, or has been nine, oh. nine years old. That's where they get the hand-eye coordination to use the daggers. Perfect. So. Well, there you go. What nine-year-old doesn't want a dagger? Yeah. All right. Well, that's, we're finishing up for today. So thank you very much for joining us in our Fortress of Nerditude, and hopefully you guys can use the sword fighting techniques, although maybe you should go to a trained professional. And that's it for today. Signing out, I'm Bridget. I'm Huna.